If you guys want to know 10 jailbreak tips and tricks that you probably didn't already know before, make sure to watch to the end of this video. Let's get right into it. <laughs> Make sure you check out my new group and buy merch at Brigon's Mythical Squad and follow me on Twitter at Brigon2. Hello guys, welcome back to the YouTube channel. Today we're going to be going over some of the top 10 Roblox jailbreak tricks that a lot of players don't know about. So I got some of the top 10 tricks I could find that a lot of people don't know and I really think they should. Some of the essential tricks are some that are just flashy and a lot of fun that I was kind of surprised to find out people don't know about. So I made a video out of all of them. And comment down below how many of these you didn't know beforehand, how many of them you learned. And I'll be giving the person with the top comment $100,000 in Roblox jailbreak safe. So comment down below what you learned from this video, what tricks you're going to use from now on, what you think is the best, whatever you want pretty much, and your Roblox username. And again, the most liked comment will get $100,000 in jailbreak safe. So let's get on with the video. Number 10, invisible tires. Okay, so everyone's probably had this happen to them at some point. Uh, someone shot your car and you don't know how, but somehow you wound up getting invisible tires. I wound up having this happen to me at the very beginning, like in beta when I start, started playing the game. And I've never really known how to replicate it, but I recently figured it out. Pretty much what you have to do is you basically just get a normal car with rims in it, and I'll do that right here. If you upgrade your car, the tires will get the rims in them. Go back to normal, like that. You get a normal car, just like you normally would. I put mine on high suspension so that it looks better when the tires are popped, but all you have to do is drive by somebody and basically have them pop their pop your tires. Okay, so as you can see here, my assistant tie is gonna pop my tires. So what this will do is, as you can see, you just have the rims. It gets rid of everything but the rims. So with the mobile garage game pass, if you upgrade, the rims will go away. It'll switch out the tires for the rims and you'll be totally floating for a second. Now this isn't permanent. Your tires will respawn, but only your tires. So as you can see right here, all I have is my tires in my car. Now you can do this without the mobile garage game pass. You just have to get into a um, into a garage very quickly or have someone follow you into a garage. It, someone really has to um, help you out with that. Mainly it can happen randomly when a pop just, cop just shoots you and your tires pop. You can just press that button and make it work. But I think it looks totally cool. And if you ever wanted to know how to do that, that's how you do it. On a side note, it also looks really, really dope on the monster truck with the ginormous tires. They become completely invisible and then hollow like this. Like if I had a personalized look all the time, if I could do this all the time, I definitely would. Number nine, negate fall damage. Okay guys, so here's basically how this glitch works. Say you know you're going to fall, like you know you're gonna fall. Well, pretty much what's gonna happen when you fall is you have a few seconds before you ragdoll. You're falling, but after a few seconds of falling, you wind up ragdolling and hitting the ground. And from this height, you'll pretty much die. From other heights, you'll probably just take damage. But if you wanna negate all fall damage, here's basically what you have to do. So as you can see right here, I'm gonna to go to spawn and I'm in my helicopter, I'm gonna jump out in a second. But basically, I'm gonna get my parachute and I'm not falling yet, okay? I'm not falling, but if I go to spawn a car, you have this very short amount of time before you fall where you can, before you ragdoll. So if I jump, I'm gonna have a few seconds before I ragdoll, and in those seconds, I'm going to spawn a car. What that'll do is I'm protected by the car, so you'll never take fall damage while you're in a car. You guys probably already know this. You can spawn the car with the mobile garage game pass up in the air, and then when you come crashing to the ground, the car will smash into the ground, you won't. Okay, so this is also very useful when it comes to evading cops. So this isn't getting robbed at the moment, but imagine there's a cop outside the door, right? And you wanna get away as quickly as possible. Basically, you can just jump away like this, and then without really worrying about your height, assuming he's not gonna shoot you down or anything like that, you can just keep flying away. So you don't really have to worry about how you're gonna land. You can just spawn a car while you're in the air, like this fire truck right here. Let's spawn that right before you run out of gas and again the vehicle will take all the damage this is very good for getting away or getting fall damage if you have a jetpack and it'll actually for force the vehicle into like this glitched state as you can see here it's not moving nearly as fast and it's really odd with the fire truck not really with other vehicles but with the fire truck it'll just keep spinning around although this does actually lead us into number eight so let's get right into that number eight volt bike override glitch this is very useful to the people for the people with the volt bike who constantly have troubles with it, constantly are hating on it because it's so glitchy and hard to ride with. 
Basically, it's kind of the same concept of, as before. You have to force the Volt Bike into kind of like the glitch state that that um, the fire truck was in. So there are a few ways to do this. You don't need the jetpack for it, and you don't need the Mobile Garage Game Pass, but it's especially easy with the jetpack. So basically, all you have to do is fly up into the air and get ready to spawn your Volt Bike. And while you're in the air, you can spawn it, and it'll get like this cool flame flame in the back of it for a second. But as you can see, it's in like this glitch state. Now for most cars, the glitch state doesn't really do anything. It'll turn as much as you want it to. It can actually go get the trail to go through itself, which is really weird for the Volt Bike. It doesn't normally happen. You can get the trail to cross itself, which is again not normal for the Volt Bike. You can try it as much as you want to have before. It's pretty much impossible to do normally. But basically for the Volt Bike, since it acts so strange, I don't know why, but the way it's coded, it acts very different from all the other cars. As you can see, my guy is trying to walk with the Volt Bike and it's forcing him faster. So I'm kind of just like, my face is in the Volt Bike. That doesn't seem very comfortable. And it doesn't really seem right. It looks pretty weird, but it works, okay? It still goes just as fast as the Volt Bike normally would most of the time. It actually has an advantage over the other Volt Bike as far as speed goes. So you, if you go into first person, you can perfectly control it with your mouse. So no more glitching. It's always forced into the direction of your mouse. So one neat thing about this is if you go into the air, you actually get this crazy speed boost and you're still in first person. So if you're in first person and it goes up into the air, you get like this insane speed boost for just a second where you can go really fast. So again, it acts weird, but in the air, it's perfect. It has like these perfect it's basically, it basically fixes the Volt Bike in my opinion. It has a few problems with it. There are a few glitches you can do with it. You guys can explore this for yourself. But that is number eight in my opinion because it's very, very useful for the owners of the Volt Bike. And it's not perfect, but it works very, very well in my opinion. It's definitely better than the original Volt Bike. And I'm pretty sure, I don't know how well this would work on mobile. You guys might want to test that. It might work way better on mobile. So the only bad thing about this one is that you do need the jetpack, but you don't need the mobile garage game pass like I used before. You just don't have to do it in the air. So as you can see, it spawns right here. All you have to do is fly with them with the jetpack and then while you're hovering, get on while you're hovering. So basically uh, like that, as you can see, I got on while I was hovering. And so now it's got the same kind of trick attached to it. And it still has this whole, it still has the properties in the air that are really weird. In my opinion, it actually seems to go faster and it's max speed when it's in the air sometimes like it's not all the time but it's weird it's like sometimes it'll go slow on land sometimes and then it'll go really fast when you hit something i don't know it's, it, but it's like all the power of the volt bike controlled anyways that's how you do it without the mobile garage game pass and to all those who don't like the fact that you need to have the jetpack i say to you you have a one million dollar car why don't you have a fifty thousand dollar jetpack you know what i mean like it's definitely worth it Okay, so let's get on with number seven. Number seven, museum car escape. So I'm pretty sure it's happened to everybody, right? You're robbing the museum and you get your stuff, okay? You get all your stuff and then you realize everyone's taking off without you. Everyone else has a jetpack but you. On this scenario, I have a jetpack. I'm gonna pretend I don't. Everyone else has a, a jetpack and they're all gonna leave through that hole right there and you're gonna be left behind. And you're just totally gonna be left behind and there's no way for you to escape, you're trapped. So basically what you do in this scenario, if you have the mobile garage game pass, is you go to this hole right here. So that you can't spawn cars underneath things. That's how basically this works. And you can't spawn cars if something's in the way. But if you wait for this dot to get out of the way and you sit right there by the hole, you can spawn the ambulance or in my favorite, the, in my opinion, my favorite is the SWAT van. And if you, as long as you're underneath that hole just right, you can keep trying it. It should spawn, and then if you jump out, assuming you don't have a jetpack, you can jump on top and get out that way without a jetpack at all. Now, the only downside of this is you need the mobile garage game pass with a lot of these, but it is a really good way to get out if you're totally trapped. And that brings us to number six. Number six, museum tree escape. So I see it all the time, okay? People come out, and maybe they use that trick, or maybe they just come out with their jetpack, and then, or there's a cop on top, and they want to jump down, okay? So instead of doing this and horribly getting ragdolled and then getting caught, there's a certain other trick you can do. So these trees right here, people don't know it, but if you jump off or right underneath that little that little point at the top, there is the tree stump. So if you jump right on that point and then stay still, you'll pretty much be stuck right on top of the tree stump. And if you do it just right, you can jump onto that and then jump down. 
or use it as a hiding spot, either one, because it's very unlikely that someone's going to actually look inside of the tree. But you can do that and then jump down. Honestly, this one's not really as amazing as some of the other ones, but the reason it's number six is because so many people could get away with not getting caught by using that. They could just jump down and keep running and the cop will jump off and get ragdolled. It takes a little bit of practice. If you get it just right, it's a skill you always have, jumping on that tree, and the cops will just be ragdolled while you drive away. So in my opinion, that's a pretty good trick. Number five, quickest jail escape. So this one's not really as much of a glitch as it is just like a trick, something you can do, some knowledge for you. The fastest way out of jail is not through the wall or through the sewers. Believe it or not, the fastest way out of jail is actually with the box, the spark box, that you can punch and get out to the door. But you don't punch it, you do something else with it. I'm going to show you guys that in just a second. But say you're really in a rush, you know how much time your friends are in, whatever. You want to get out of jail as fast as possible. This is the absolute fastest way to do that that I found. Jump on top of the box. And it's a little bit difficult, you can get hurt. Jump on top of the box, jump on the fence, onto the umbrella, hopefully you can get it first try. And then jump on top of that, go over here, jump on top of that, ah uh, dang, dang it. Jump on top of the post and you're free, right there, right then, spawn your raptor and get away. You're already out of jail. That is the fastest way out of, to get out of jail that I can determine. Fastest way I've ever found, like solo, maybe if you had someone by the wall to pick you up it'd be faster. But if you're playing on your own, or if you just want to get out of jail without depending on anyone, that is what you want to do. No game pass is required, obviously. Anyone can do this, and it takes a bit of skill. You might get hurt on the fence. You might have to go the slow way because you're already too hurt. And you pretty much need maximum health for the maximum speed to do this. So it's a little bit difficult. It requires a bit of parkour, obby-like skills. But it's a very useful skill to have, and especially if a cop comes out and they get stuck in that room behind the fence and you just jumped right over it. How are they gonna find you? You're already way, way ahead of them. So I think everyone should know how to do that. Uh, onward with number four. Number four, Jet Ski Land Glitch, credit to Corrupt SM 64 So if you guys don't already know, and a lot of you probably do, most certainly there are some of you out there who don't, I just figured this out, and uh, credit to Corrupt SM 64 he told me about this glitch, I was asking around people for different tricks, anyways, you guys probably know about this, if you get this jet ski right here, then you can drive it all the way to the waterfall, now the waterfall is all the way over here, and there are other waterfalls like over there, but I'll show you why those won't work. If they basically have to have water coming down them, that's a particle effect. There's still dirt right there. There's just dirt. You can't ride up that. But the waterfall all the way at this other part of the map that I'll show you. The waterfall over here is especially unique because the thing about it is that although you have to waddle your jet ski a little bit over the land, it has water running all the way up. You can see that right there, the terrain right there. And it takes a little while to waddle your jet ski. The terrain right there is all water. So you can drive right up this water and jump off at the very top. And the jet ski will actually do this. It's a little bit difficult. The jet ski will do this. And then basically, I don't know why, for some reason after you do this, it'll, it'll trick it into thinking that land is water so you can basically ride it around anywhere in the map now a small warning if you jump off your jet ski this will be undone and then no so this is an incredibly cool glitch because in my opinion the jet ski just might be one of the fastest vehicles in jailbreak if you use this glitch which will allow you to drive it on land but it's incredibly fast this way and it's a little bit uncontrollable though to be honest but you don't need any kind of game pass or anything to do this all you need is to own the jet ski, so it's pretty cool. And again, it's not really a great getaway vehicle because it'll lose this ability. But look how, how fast that goes. That might just be faster than any other car. I'll, I'll experiment with this on my own. And make, it'll be a separate topic. But if you guys want to do this glitch, that's all you have to do is drive to the waterfall and get onto land. I think this is incredibly cool. And uh, oh wow, wow, yeah, that is insanely fast, you guys. That is insane. That is in uncontrollable but totally insane. <laughs> what the heck? That is insane anyways, guys. So if you wanna have some fun, do that trick, and uh, let's get on with the next trick in this video. Number three, flying car glitch. So I honestly feel like this could have this could have been number two or number one, but because it's so janky and so unpredictable, I didn't really wanna rank it like that. Basically what this involves is standing on top of a car, 
and pressing E so you get in and then jumping at almost the exact minute, like a millisecond afterwards. Pretty much at the exact moment, you'll probably be fine just pressing them both. And uh, it's really hard to do, I'm really bad at it. You press E and jump, it'll hop your car. Like you can see right there, hop, hop. It's hopping the car, you can kind of see that. And so what you can do with this, if you're really good at it, is you can jump in and then while it hops, I'm not doing it while I'm bad at this, you can jump out while it's hopping, land in the driver's seat while it's in the air and kind of like, kind of like complete this sequence of hops. It's really difficult to do. I'm really bad at it. I wind up like mashing, but it has a lot of potential. I've seen people get it really high up in the air. And supposedly if you did it seamlessly, you could actually get your car into the sky. And then again, I'm so bad at it. It's so weird that I wind up getting killed. And I just figured this out too. I just asked people for, um, it's one of those tricks that I uh, asked you guys for two of them. And a lot of them were ones I already knew about. I didn't deserve a place in this video, but this is definitely one of the odd ones that you guys should experiment with. It's pretty cool. I'll keep trying it. You don't need any kind of game pass, obviously. All you need is a car and a decent keyboard, you know, but it's not that it, it's really unpredictable. From what I can tell, you have to be in the driver's seat. Yes. Yes. Oh, I got it. Two stories. I'll keep trying this. Uh... definitely seems to work better on the Camaro for whatever reason. It's very odd. I feel like I've got it to jump twice. I feel like if you were a master at this, and I'll try it again some other time off camera, I feel like if you were a master at this, you could get it to work, but it's just so hard to pull off that it's not really feasible. It gets pretty high. Anyways, that's that trick. Let's get into number two. Number two, Tiny Task Auto Rob. So I specifically said there'll be no hacks in this video. And some of you might, not be a, might be a little bit uncomfortable with this one. It's definitely not a hack. Let me explain it. But this is basically uses it uses a program called Tiny Task. Now, if you don't know what Tiny Task is, I'll Google it for you real quick. Millions of people use it. It's mainly not used for Roblox. I mean, it's not a hack in any way. It's like an auto clicker. It's basically just a glorified auto clicker. If we're being totally honest, what it'll do is it'll move your mouse for you. So if you go to Tiny Task. Um, you guys can search for this all you want. I have my caps lock on tiny task. I won't go two months in depth into it. I made a video specifically about this and next Friday I'll be making a more in-depth video about how it's not a hack and how it's totally fine. Tinytask.net. Everyone pretty much agrees it's safe. You can download it. It's literally a really small file. It takes under 200 kilobytes to download. I've downloaded it before. Download.exe. It should literally be like under 200. So as you can see right here, it literally takes 35 kilobytes. That is so little storage. Like you pretty much couldn't. And I'm not saying that no one has, but I'm saying it'd be pretty hard to fit a hack into that much storage. I mean, it's not really used for that. Like via web advisor scanning it through it safe. Is tiny task safe? Everyone will pretty much tell you minimalist Windows automation app you can use and record repeat actions. This is Google itself. This is actually Google itself saying this. Unbelievably small, compact, no scripting necessary. It's incredibly simple. So I'll basically show you how it works. And I won't go very in depth into this in this video. If you search for Tiny Task, I have it on my computer, obviously. So pretty much what Tiny Task does is as if you told your little brother to move your mouse for you and just rob the thing over and over again. You can literally do it offline. I wasn't even touching Roblox. It doesn't mess with any of the files or anything. It's totally fine. Basically what it does is you can hit record, put it on top of the rob button, press F to stay active, hold down E, and then it'll rob it for you. And then I can press F again, move it off, back to the record button. And if I hit continuous playback right here and play it, it'll keep robbing this door for me. It'll click on the tab and perfectly rob it for me with the mouse. And again, it's not auto robbing, it's not teleporting me in jailbreak, not a hack. Just a little trick you can do, and you can wind up getting like $300,000 if you leave this on overnight on a VIP server. I made a video about it, I'll put it in the second line of the description if you guys want to watch it. If you don't believe me, if you think it's a hack or something, that's totally fine. I won't go very in depth into it, and uh, that's just the second trick. I thought about making it the first, it's so useful, but then again, people don't really think of it as being incredibly fair. So yeah, let's go check out that video if you're interested. Let's get on into the other trick. Number one, money stacking. Now this is a trick that a lot of you probably already know about. 
It basically involves robbing one store, holding the money from that store, and robbing another store, and cashing in all the money at the same time. So if you've ever seen someone, if you ever seen in like the chat, it'll say, whoever, whoever, maybe we'll do Wizard Dude 500. Wizard Dude 500 robbed the jewelry store for $6,000. Wizard Dude 500 robbed the museum for $7,000. It'll put them right on top of each other, it'll, in the chat, as if they robbed them both at the same time. That's really not what happens. It's not a trick. I mean, it's a trick. It's not a glitch or a hack. You guys can watch me do it right now. As you can see, guys, I have nothing open right now. I have OBS Studio, which I'm recording with. Uh, I have my notepad that I'm taking notes with. And then I just have Google Chrome, where I download a tiny task and kind of thing. Nothing open, no tricks. I have the frame FPS unlocker, FPS unlocker right here. But that's not, a, that's not like a hack or anything. So basically, this is how it works. I'm gonna show you guys how you use it. I've got to wait for the jewelry store to open up first. Okay guys, so as you can see right here, there is the jewelry store right here. So I'm gonna go rob this, and this is a perfect example of how to use it. I'm gonna rob the jewelry store. Okay, so as you can see right here, I have my $5,000 from the jewelry store. Now, with the 20% benefits you get from having the VIP game pass, I'm gonna wind up turning in for about $6,000 exactly. So $5,000 right here from the jewelry store. Now what's gonna happen is I'm gonna go rob the museum. So when you rob the museum, you get a duffel bag, right? You carry out a duffel bag full of eight kilograms of money if you have the upgraded duffel bag. And since it uses a different system, it doesn't show your money in the same way as the uh, jewelry store does. You can see the money panel right here. With the museum, you don't get any money panel, so they won't cancel each other out. So basically, I can hold my money from the jewelry store and go in and rob the museum right here. And I'm gonna wind up getting my bag, and you can see I have both the, I have the museum money and the jewelry store money at the same time. I didn't do anything fishy at all, no weirdness going on. I just robbed one store, came out and robbed the other. So you can see this is totally legit. Now you can also take this one step further. You can just quit at the museum, but where you mainly make the most money is I'm gonna use that card glitch again. It's mainly when you get out tree glitch, tree stump trick, that's pretty cool. And you get out right here, I still have my money from both robberies. I uh, can't spell my torpedo because I just used the car. So pretty much I still have my money, I got into the car, so it doesn't show it, but I have the uh, I have the duffel bag on me and I have the money from the jewelry store. So you can take this actually one step farther. And because the, the museum's kind of open, the store's kind of open in a cycle, the jewelry store will open, then the museum will open, then the power plant will open, kind of like one after the other. So it might take a little bit, but the power plant should already be open. Or in like 30 seconds, yeah, it's already open. Or in like 30 seconds it would open. So I'm still holding the money from both robberies and I'm robbing the power plant. So pretty much what you can do with this is you can just jump through like before. You can't crouch, you gotta be kind of careful. And uh, you can just go through this way. Now, what you can kind of do, you can just kind of solve the uh, robbery. Right, so as you can see, I'm about to get the money, the uranium. Okay, there you go. And now I have the uranium at the same time. As you can see, I'm holding all three robbery monies at once. I'm going to spawn my torpedo and just drive away. And then you should probably be able to see in the chat, when I cash these in, it's going to give me the money from all three robberies at once. This is basically the best way to grind, in my opinion, like the best way to grind for money. Okay, so I'm about to cash in the jewelry store money once I get close enough. You can see my money right there uh, on the top right corner. Okay, that's 6k for that. Now if I go to the collector, it'll give me... Wow, okay. So I got... Someone chatted and someone else cashed in. But I got $6,000, 5000 right there. 6400 from the museum and 5050 from the power plant. And I cashed them all in at the same time. And now pretty much in about 30 seconds, the museum's probably going to be open. Now, there are two more things that you guys should know about the whole money stacking things. It's so important, such a great trick. There are two things you guys have to know about it. One, you can't overlap different types of money. So you could say I had the jewelry store money and the museum duffel bag. You can't hold the museum duffel bag 
and the, and the duffel bag from the passenger train at the same time. It just doesn't work. One will cancel out the other. They have to be different types of money. They have to use different money counters. So if you rob the bank while you have the money from the jewelry store, it uses the same GUI and so it'll cause a problem. Another thing is you probably just wondered where did my duffel bag go? So basically there's also a trick where other than flying out of the roof, if you use your jetpack, you still have your duffel bag, but it'll disappear. So if you get into a car and jump out, I still have it, eight kilograms. But if I fly for a second and then I keep running, it's like the donut trick pretty much. I can get my shotgun, shoot that kind of thing, fight, fly, and basically rob the jewelry store. Because you have to go to crawl to rob the jewelry store because that one door, and, or just to get from the bottom. So you have to be able to crawl, and you can't do that when you have the duffel bag. So you fly, and then you can crawl and shoot and that kind of thing, and then your duffel bag's still there if you get back back into a car. And whether or not you're holding it or not, it'll still cash in when you go to the base. So those are two things you guys should know about it. Anyways, guys, thank you for watching. That is all the tips I have this time. Make sure you like and subscribe for more. And uh, next, next week on Friday, I'm going to have another video out about all the about the different ways to use tiny tasks like tiny task a more in-depth depth guide of what to do with it because people had trouble with it before i'm going to go more in depth about how to use it a more complete guide like what do you not do with it pretty much so that you guys know exactly how to use it and uh, again not a hack go check out that video the older video too if you want to use that trick and i uh, thank you for watching make sure to like and subscribe and i'll see you all again next time